Audi, Jacob here. Today we're looking at Kimberly Clark Corporation, ticker symbol KMB. Ah, again, why I love investing. It's it's so cool to see companies that I've never heard of, but I know. And so here we see that they produce um, personal care, consumers, tissue, and Casey Professional. They produce huggies, pull-ups, little swimmers, so many fun little things. Kleenex, Scott, Cottonelle. Produce so many different things. And, uh, yeah, it's cool to cool to see businesses that uh you know you know but never heard of in a way i guess it's interesting so 3.9 percent dividend yield pretty much the four percent we're looking for right now 41.7 billion dollar market cap on 48 billion dollar enterprise value so a little bit of net debt here return on investor capital looks great we're looking at a 20 percent average return on investor capital the return on equity looks absolutely astounding it's probably because they have so much debt and their shareholders equity their balance sheet is so low. That's my presumption. But as for margins, actually up a little bit, we can say gross margin, 34% is still 34%. And then operating margin, 13% up to 15%. That's cool. Paid dividends consistently for the last 10 years and have increased them uh, at least 1.7%. So increase the dividend every year for the last 10 years. It's positive for dividend investors. 7.4% long-term debt, total debt of about $8 billion and only a billion in cash on hand. So $7 billion net debt here. Let's see what their free cash flow looks like. Okay. Okay. That's pretty reasonable. So their five-year average free cash flow is right around the little over $2 billion. Let's say their average is probably $2.3 billion. And so on 2.3 billion, paying out 1.6 billion in dividends, that's a hefty amount. We're looking at, what is that? 1 1.6, 1.6, 2.2, 70%. So 70 to 75% payout ratio. The only reason I say that's kind of okay with me is because the company was founded in 1872. And so... I mean, they've been around forever. Their cash flows appear very consistent. It looks like in the last 10 years, their lowest free cash flow was 2015 with $1.2 billion and as high as, what is this, $2.5 billion? What is this one? $2.6 billion, $2.5 billion. So on $2.5 billion on the upper end, $1.2 Three on the lower end. I mean, that's a very consistent business on a ten-year average base or on a ten-year basis. That's pretty incredible. So to me, the payout is higher than what I want, but I'm not too alarmed by it. The fact that they've recently paid down shares uh, or paid down debt is awesome. They also use a bit of cash for common stock repurchases. I will say, though, I want this to go down, but it's not going to happen, and so I'm just going to keep it the same. I know last, my previous video, I said I balance it out. A company that's historically done this, I think, for as long as they have, I'm just going to say that they're going to do what they do, increase it 1% a year so they can say that they've increased their dividend for a bazillion years. I have no idea, but... Um, when, it gets, when I do more research, I'll be able to look at actually how long they've increased it for. But this is just me doing what I know they'll do, and then I'll balance out their share change and debt. Re I'll balance out in my head how the debt is going to be affected, affecting them uh, through them not repurchasing, and then their common stock repurchases. I'm going to lower that due to their payout ratio being as high as it is. I think uh, on the revenue side, it's, it is a flat business. Like I'm going to say 1%, and then... I'm only going to do 12 on the PE and price free cash flow, or I'll do 13 because, I mean, if they find an investment, something to invest in, they can get a great return on it, but they allocate all their capital towards a dividend. And so to me, and they've done that historically as well, they just haven't found things to invest in at those rates, which is tough because things just get so large. It's the same with Apple. They have like 40% return on invested capital, but they're a $2 trillion business. And so... You know, if they find 
a $10 million thing to invest in that they'll get a 40 million, 40% return on that investment, but 40 million in comparison to their earnings of hundred plus billion is negligible essentially. And so, um, that's where it just gets tough. And same here. I mean, it's such a, such a well-established company, the things that they're good at, they just already own them or they've already invested in it. So it's tough to, uh, have that great return investment, but not necessarily have things to invest in, but I'm still keeping it at 13 saying like, there's essentially going to be no growth after seven years, but on the off chance that they find growth, they will likely get a good return on it. As for margins, I'm going to do very close margins here, 10, 11, share change, relatively flat. I'm going to say that it's flat because uh, their stock based compensation has been as high as $169 million recently. I'm just going to say that the stocks that they repurchase are going to essentially offset the compensation. And then hopefully with the 20% or so of free cash flow that remains, they pay down some debt. That's what I want to see. We'll see if they do it or not. And we get to a final price that needs to fall a lot. 56% before you get a 15% return, given these assumptions. I mean, it's a consistent business, but every business is the present value of free cash flow. So I just don't know what else they're thinking here. I just, I just don't see a way that this could give you a 15% return that logistically makes sense to me. I mean, if we have three and then even high, let's say super high, PE and price free cash flow, and then the highest these have ever been. I'm still not getting there. It's it's just interesting to see that. So to me right now, it's a fantastic company. I think that you know their four percent dividend yield is just fine. I don't see that going down anytime soon. I just personally I just want more return. And I just don't think you're gonna get the price appreciation that you're looking for. Unless you're if obviously you're looking for just a dividend yield, I think that that's fine. That's all you care about. You don't really care about appreciation of stock. But to me, I'm just, I want appreciation with the, the dividend. And um, I just don't see that happening here. So, hope you enjoyed the video. And as a rest of the day, thank you.